welcome students so we were talking about the calculation of the liquidity ratios and uh, in my previous discussion uh, we discussed uh, how to calculate the quick ratio and in the quick ratio we saw here that current assets minus inventories are to be taken in the numerator but in the denominator some changes are also required to be done and that is current liabilities which are taken as it is current liabilities plus short term debt that has to be taken as a denominator in the current ratio but for calculating the quick ratio some changes some adjustments should be done in the denominator also so the current liabilities plus we should take the short term loan net of the working capital limit it means total short term loan minus the working capital limit whatever the working capital limit is that should be subtracted and that should not be taken into account so in this case when we found in case of the grassim industries we have uh, uh, seen here that your uh, say entire short term debt is point number 7 all short term debts represent working capital borrowings so once these are the working capital borrowings all it means we will have to subtract that so we subtracted it and then we took in the denominator as only current liabilities and provisions which works out as 1450.06 and when we worked out the limit that means the ratio that came out as 1.05 is to 1 and 1 is to 1 it means the ratio is at the satisfactory level the standard rule of thumb is that is the 1 is to 1 and in this case also we have found that the quick ratio is 1.05 is to 1 and 1 is to 1 for the previous year so it means it is well within the rule and quick ratio is fine so i was talking to you about the working capital limit net of working capital limit so let's just understand what is the working capital limit see when there is a need to the firms for having the short term finance short term finance is required by the firms for meeting its day to day short term expenses and in that case we need the funds for buying raw material paying for utilities paying for the wages to the workers maybe after 30 days but you need money so sometime when the firms uh, face a liquidity problem or they don't want to keep more amount of the cash as cash in that case they get a limit sanction from the bank means working capital finance short term finance from the banks can be had by the firms in three manners and these three manners are one is the working capital loan and then the second is the cc limit cash credit this is called as a cc limit and then third one is the discounting of credit sales bills credit sales bills so this is the these are the three ways to have the working capital finance from the banks when you take the working capital loan it becomes the short term debt and that we are including in the current liabilities for calculating the quick ratio what what is the cc limit and let's discuss the third first discounting of the credit sale bills as i discussed with you sometime back also that when the firm sell on credit and the buyer from this firm or from grassim industries say they have to pay after the end of the credit period it means uh, if credit period given by grassim industries to their buyers is 2 months it means the firm is not going to receive these funds back before 2 months or 60 days but in the meantime if the firm requires funds grassim industry require funds they can go to the bank they can tell the bank that look we have sold to this firm it's a having a good credit rating in the market it's a credit worthy firm we have sold them on credit they'll pay us after 60 days so why not you buy these bills from us and on the 60th day when the payment will come either to us or we will direct them to pay to you directly you can adjust the advance payment given to us take charge some interest on that and some administrative charges and commission and if some balance is left then you can remit this back to us so this is a discounting of the credit sale bills but cc limit working capital limit or the cc limit cc limit or the working capital limit is the one where when the firms need the short term finance they don't want to have the working capital loan because the difference between the cc limit and the working capital loan is that when you take the working capital loan say for example some firm has it taken a working capital loan of 1 lakh rupees and that loan is taken on the 1st of january 
and on an average during the whole year of the 2016, the firm has withdrawn 50,000 rupees out of this and remaining 50,000 rupees are lying unused in the account. So, now it is not the problem of the bank whether the firm uses entire 1 lakh rupees sanctioned to the firm or the firm uses 50 percent out of it, firm uses 25 percent out of it or 75 percent amount of it or entire amount out of it, firm has to pay back to the bank the total amount back how much is used and unused plus the interest on the 1 lakh rupees which is the sanctioned amount. So, in the entire loan amount whether they use that loan because bank sanctions and they transfer the money to your account. As and when you need money you withdraw for example, firm received a truckload of raw material they have to make a payment of 25,000 rupees they can withdraw from this loan account. right? So, on and on an average they found that for the whole of the year they have withdrawn sometimes they withdrew 20,000 sometimes they withdrew uh, 10,000, 5,000. So, maybe total withdrawal they have done oh, for the whole of the years is 50,000. So, they used 50,000, but they are paying interest on the entire amount of 1 lakh rupees. So, it means that uh, say extra interest they have paid on even on the unused part of the loan. So, they do not want to take the working capital loan say they want the working capital assistance from the bank or the loans from the bank in the form of CC limits or the cash credit limits. Now, <coughs> in case of the CC limits what happens? When any firm applies to the bank for having the cash credit limit, then that bank sanctions a limit of 1 lakh rupees and that amount of 1 lakh rupees will be credited or will be transferred to the firm's current account in the bank. So, it will be transferred. So, as and when now the firm requires money. Say for example, firm received a truckload of raw material and they require 25,000 rupees out of this 1 lakh. So, the firm has withdrawn 25,000 rupees. Next day morning when they got some sales collection to the extent of 20,000 rupees, they deposited back say 20,000 rupees. It means the firm used that 25,000 rupees withdrawn today for buying of raw material for how much time? Tomorrow they returned 20,000 rupees out of that and day after tomorrow uh, they received another 5000 rupees and they deposited back in the CC limit account. So, they use out of the 25000 rupees withdrawn, they use first 20000 rupees only for 24 hours one day and second is the another 5000 they used for two days. So, firm has to pay the interest only on 20000 for only one day and remaining 5000 only for two days. So, this way what happens whether the bank sanctions 1 lakh or 10 lakhs whatever the amount out of the firm the bank so out of the account the firm is using firm has to pay the interest only on the used amount withdrawn amount and for the period for which it is used not for the whole of the amount not for the whole of the period. Now, this is the major difference between the working capital loan and the CC limit. So, most of the firms want that they should get the working capital finance from the banks through CC limits not through the working capital loans because this way they have the flexibility. They have the funds in their account as and when they need money they withdraw from this account they use it for the number of days they want to use it. When that money is surplus becomes surplus with the firm they return it back to the bank and they pay only interest for that much number of days on that much amount which is withdrawn not on the total amount of the limit that is sanctioned and allowed to the firm to be withdrawn. But here the that is the negative part of this uh, CC limit is working capital limit is that firms are not allowed to keep two accounts in the bank or any one account in the one bank and another account in the another bank. It may not be it may be like this that when you want to withdraw 25,000 rupees for paying the truckload of raw material you withdraw from this account, but tomorrow you receive 25,000 rupees as a sales collection and that you deposit in the another account that is not allowed, that is not permissible, that is not allowed. You will maintain only one account, you will withdraw funds whenever there is a requirement you will withdraw from the CC limit account, but when you have uh, collected the sales you have to return it back to the CC limit account and you have to deposit the money in the CC limit account. For example, it becomes uh, say next day morning when the selections sorry collections come to the firm collections come to the extent of 30,000 rupees. So, firm has withdrawn 25,000 rupees and firm has 
got the receipts of 30,000 rupees. So, they will withdraw 25,000 rupees. So, the balance of the CC limit will come down to 75,000 rupees. But next day morning when they will get 30,000 rupees collect 30,000 rupees, they will deposit that 30,000 rupees back in the same account. Balance will become that is the say again what was the how much is the amount withdrawn that is they have withdrawn uh, 25,000 rupees. So, what is the balance left here? 75,000 rupees in this account and next day morning when they got the collections of the credit sales that was 30,000 rupees. So, now the balance of this account will become 105,000 rupees it means 1 lakh 5,000 rupees. So, now this 5,000 extra cannot be kept anywhere else this has to be kept in the same account. So, sometime the CC limit account also balance in this account can be more than what is sanctioned by the bank because you uh, see your withdrawal and deposits are through the same account. So, here if you withdraw the 25,000 rupees you use it for 2 days you will pay the interest only on 25,000 rupees only for, for a period of 2 days and for the remaining 75,000 rupees no interest will be paid this is the cost to be borne by the bank. Uh, but negative part here is that now if the balance in the CC limit account working capital limit account has become positive it is not 1 lakh it is 1 lakh 5000. So, on this additional 5000 you will not get any interest. So, you will also not if there is any surplus amount you will not get any interest or the firms will not get any interest on that amount and other way around when the firms withdraw only will be paying interest on that part which is withdrawn out of the working capital limit they will not be paying the interest on the whole of the amount sanctioned amount that is 1 lakh which is happening in case of the working capital loan account. So, people want firms want that more short term funds should come in the form of the working capital limit not as a working capital loan and uh, then third one is the discounting of the credit sale bills which I have already talked to you. So, now the RBI has put after 97-98's monetary policy RBI has put a uh, means given a direction to the banks that this habit of withdrawing more money short term finance from the working capital limit should be avoided and the firms should be say, say guided or should be educated that they should seek more working capital finance through working capital loans so that the pressure on the banks can be brought down. And they have fixed a limit now that now the it is only a directive it is not a directive but it is a guideline given to the banks by RBI that if there is a requirement of working capital for any firms equivalent to 10 crores or above equivalent to 10 crores or above the requirement is equivalent to 10 crores or above then 80 percent of the working capital should be given as a working capital loan and 20 percent should be given as a CC limit. So, the ratio should be 80 20 and gradually over the years this limit has to be brought down from 10 crores to less than 10 crores. So, that we can shift from the say the CC limit kind of the system to the working capital loan and the working capital loan can be made as a most popular way of getting the short term finance rather than through the CC limits. So, this is the working capital limit and how it works or how it functions and how the firms withdraw money uh, or make use of the short term finance through the working capital limit. So, as there is a change in the numerator in case of the quick ratio we have from the total current assets we have subtracted the inventory. Similarly, in case of the current liabilities also in the denominator part in the current liabilities we have taken total of the current liabilities plus short term debt short term loans, but minus working net of means it is a net of the working capital limit means how much money is being used as a working capital limit that will not be considered as a short term debt. And we have found in this case that entire short term debt is as a working capital limit from the banks. So, in that case uh, that amount has not to be considered here. So, only we have taken the uh, current liabilities and provisions which, which is 1450.06 crores. So, if you calculate the ratio we have found that it is well within the standard rule of thumb and that is the 1 is to 1. So, they are maintaining a say, say a good optimum current uh, quick ratio. <coughs> now, we uh, calculate the next ratio that is called as the super quick ratio or you call it as the acid test ratio. This ratio is called as the acid test ratio this is the another ratio 
asset test ratio and for calculating the asset test ratio we should take here the cash plus marketable securities cash in hand and cash at bank plus marketable security means very short term liquid investment almost kind of divided by the current liabilities plus short term loan net of working capital limit. So, it means in this case also the denominator will remain the same that the denominator is 1450 because the short term debt is only net of the if you take the short term loan entirely it is the working capital limit, but in case of the numerator now we will have to take the cash and marketable securities. So, let us see how much is the cash and marketable securities are there any uh, is there any amount of the marketable securities here very short term investments. Let us check in the balance sheet if you check in the balance sheet we have the cash and bank balances which is 116.38 crores, but I think there is no short term investment interest on accrued uh, interest accrued on investments investments these are the long term investments I guess because we are given the long term investments here in the uh, assets. If you look at the asset side of the Grassman industries yes we have the investments yes this investment is 4274.70 crores, but they are the long term investments. Uh, if you talk about these in uh, this interest this is on the long term investments when you talk about inventories then in sundry debtors cash and bank balances and loans and advances. So, it means there is no short term investment there is no marketable securities when there is no short term investment when there is no marketable security we cannot take it. So, we will take only the cash part and cash is how much this is 116 crore point 116 point 38 crores. So, it is 116 point 38 crores and this is the numerator. So, the numerator here is this much if you calculate this ratio how much it works out as it works out as 0 0.08 is to 1. So, it is almost 8 percent of the total current liabilities the cash and bank balances part is only 8 percent cash and bank balances part is only 8 percent. So, uh, this is not a, a very a good amount, but if you look at the overall level of the current assets and if you compare it with the current liabilities super cook ratio keeping 8 percent of the cash is uh, not bad they are keeping sufficient amount uh, sufficient amount of the cash as I told you that keeping higher amount of the cash also is not justified is also not acceptable it is not uh, uh, worthwhile because the cost increases. So, I think they are keeping very nominal optimum amount of the cash that is 8 percent as compared to their liabilities. So, the asset test ratio is also within range and I think because of this very you could call it as a prudent financial management uh, the overall performance of the firm has improved. We can make out that yes this firm is managing its operations well, this firm is managing its finances well, this firm is managing its distribution and sales well, this firm is managing almost all its financial and operating part well so that their overall performance is very good and it is excellent. Now, we calculate the other three ratios they are the turnover ratios, but they are for studying the liquidity position of the firm. And when you talk about the turnover ratios here we talk about the debtors turnover ratio. So, debtors turnover ratio we will we have calculated we have learned that how to calculate the DTR I told you that it should be calculated by we should take the credit sales, but since credit sales information is not available in the balance sheets. So, we should take it total sales total sales divided by the uh, average debtors total sales divided by the average debtors and total sales and average debtors that is a DTR and if you get the DTR then you have you have to calculate the DCP debtors collection period and for debtors collection period you have to do is that is 365 divided by DTR that is 365 divided by the debtors collection period. So, if you replace this DTR by the ratio, so the ratio becomes uh, total sales, so it will become reverse. So, it will be average debtors, average debtors divided by the total sales, average debtors divided by the total. So, 365 into average debtors and uh, or receivables, you can say average receivables divided by the total sales. So, uh, in this case, we can find out the DCP directly. So, uh, rather than calculating it in two steps you can ignore this and here if you calculate this data collection period 
So, we find let us see what is the data collection period for the grassim industries and if we calculate the DCP for the grassim industries, we will see here that how much is the data collection period for grassim industries. What are the what is the level of receivables or the sundry data for the grassim industries? If sundry data that is 576.48 crores. So, it is we are taking the closing figure, we are not taking the average figure, we are taking the closing figure. So, it is the 576.48 crores for grassim and uh, the total sales of this firm are which we have to take the uh, total sales here. Let us check what is the level of total sales here. Uh, Let us go to the p and l account. If you go to the p and l account, p and l, p &L statement, we will find the grassim industries uh, sales level and this sales level we have to take the gross sales. So, gross sales is 9607. So, if you take the gross sales level is uh, that is 9607. 9607.97 and multiply this by 365. So, you will find that our closing debtors are 9607 point uh, sorry uh, closing debtors are 576.48 crores and our total sales inclusive of excise duty they are 9607.97 crores into 365. So, you can straight away calculate the DCP that is the debtors collection period and if you calculate the DCP debtors collection period for grassim industries this works out as 22 days for the year 2006 and 7 and 5 and 6 it was 20 days. So, almost you can say largely it is the amount that is revolving around the 20 days, 20 days of the uh, say uh, credit this, this company is giving to its, its credit buyers. I told you that India if you talk about the average of Indian uh, scenario that normally the credit period which the average form in the market gives is 45 to 60 days that one and a half month to two months credit period is normally permiss is permissible or it is allowable. But you see because of the good operating structure of the firm and very sound financial structure of the firm and having a good command in the market or in the say, segment in which they are operating aggressive industry is only running the show by giving only the credit period around 20 days. They are not allowing the credit sales beyond 20 days maximum is 20 days credit period they are doing, they are giving. So, it means who can who can minimize the credit period who has the demand for its product in the market. So, they are giving the credit, but they are managing the show by 20 days only one third of the standard credit period in the market. So, it means they are only selling for 20 days and after 20 days their buyers have to pay back to the aggressive. This is the one part very good again. So, when we talked about the three first liquidity ratios we found current ratio was really wonderful. Quick ratio is well within the range means current ratio is less than the rule of thumb then quick ratio is well within the range super quick ratio is very very good only 8 percent cash they are keeping. And when we talk about the collection period, collection period is also 22 days or around 20 days. So, miss again a very wonderful result and then we calculate the one more ratio then we will close the discussion today that is the credit payment period. Let us calculate the CPP credit payment period. So, for calculating the credit payment period again we have to we were taking here the total purchases total purchases divided by uh, say uh, sundry creditors total purchases divided by sundry creditors this is the uh, uh, credit creditors turnover ratio this will be uh, giving us the CTR creditors turnover ratio. But if you uh, say uh, if, and if you have to calculate the creditors payment period you have to do that is the 365 divided by CTR that is the creditors turnover ratio. So, if you take this you will be taking reverse of it. So, the ratio will become like that is the sundry creditors divided by total purchases total purchases multiplied by 365. Now, let us calculate this ratio and try to find out that if they are giving selling on a credit for only 20 days how much credit they are getting from their suppliers and then make a comparison of the two things. Now, let us take that what is the level of sundry creditors? Let us go to the balance sheet of the Grassim Industries and let us check the level of credit sales. Credit sales, if you talk about the uh, creditors, if we talk about the creditors here, so 
<laughs> we assume that all the current liabilities are the sundry creditors. So, we are not given the details, but we will assume that all the current liabilities are the sundry creditors because their short term debt is uh, the uh, CC limit. So, uh, let us take this as a sundry creditors and this is uh, total uh, of this sundry creditors is uh, 1 to 6 6 uh, 0.86 divided by uh, how much is the total purchases if you talk about the total purchases we will have to uh, say take two things here we will take the material consumed and if you take the material consumed is uh, 2219 and then there are some finished goods also purchased we will have to totally up total it up. So, material consumed plus purchase of the finished products these two we will take. So, this will become the total purchases and this becomes the 2540 total uh, denominator is 2540 and if you take this 2540.48 and multiplied by 365 then this ratio works out as the 182 days 182 days and other is 171 days. It means now look at the difference this is a contrast when they are to give the credit in the market they are not, they are not giving more than 20, 22 days. But when they have to seek the credit they are getting the credit from the market for 6 months. Now this shows the command Grassium industry is having in the market. They are dictating the terms on their suppliers, suppliers are ready even to give the supplies or to extend the supplies uh, for a period of 6 months also and they are ready to accept the payment even after 6 months. But when they have to when the company Grassim Industries has to sell their product in the market they are not giving the credit beyond 20 days. This is the command and this command is reflected in the financial statements. If you look at the balance sheet of the Grassim Industries, if you look at the income statement of the Grassim Industries you will find it that this is reflected in the financial statements itself and this is proven by this analysis also that only who can get more credit and give less credit in the market who has the better credibility in the market. So, the Grassim Industries has much more credibility in the market that is why they are only selling very limited part of their sales on credit and just with a one third of the credit period standard credit period. But when they have to get the credit from the market people are ready to give them the credit for the 6 months also and even more than 6 months. So, it means this is reflected from this analysis also and this is reflected from these financial statements also and you can make sure that what is reflected in the financial statements that is proven by that this form has the might the strength financial strength in the market and the firm is doing excellently or exceedingly well in the market and means when we will calculate other ratios also we will come to know that in the other fronts also the firm is doing uh, means excellently exceedingly well in the market and means overall performance of the Grassim industry will be rated as excellent. So, remaining ratios and other parts of discussion we will means other other uh, points of discussion and the remaining ratios say one ratio in the liquidity that is the inventory turnover ratio and the other important say turnover ratios then we will be talking about the capital market ratios and then we will be talking about the profitability ratios that I will be taking up in the next part of discussion. Thank you very much. <laughs>